All right, so this screencast is on basic DNA structure and semi-conservative DNA replication. We realize that it's uh, essential that cells have some kind of genetic material, that cells have some kind of way to replicate themselves, to reproduce. And this is the way that they pass on their genetic material. This is the way that they pass on their genes to the next generation. We know a little bit about DNA um, structure um, as a class so far, we've talked about the double helix and we've talked about the fact that uh, nucleic acids are made up of nucleotides. This is a bunch of nucleotides put together. You've got your five carbon sugar, um, which is the, your, your deoxyribose. You have your phosphate group. You have your nitrogenous bases. Okay, remember the four nitrogenous bases, adenine and thymine go together, guanine and cytosine go together. Your purines, okay, are adenine and guanine, the, the, the two ringed bases, and then your pyrimidines are thymine and cytosine. So pyrimidines go with purines and vice versa. Notice the hydrogen bonding, two hydrogen bonds between adenine and thymine, three hydrogen bonds between guanine and cytosine. This word here, anti-parallelism, DNA has an anti-parallel structure. And if you look at this, it's kind of intuitive seeing if we, if we look specifically at this five carbon sugar, at this uh, pentagon shape, the point is facing upward in these five carbon sugars. We can see the point is facing upward and our five carbon sugars are facing kind of in a northerly direction. If you look at the other strand, this complementary strand to this one, it's the opposite. All right, Our points are facing in a southerly direction and we have our phosphate groups facing down. They're running kind of, there we go, opposites of one another. One running in this direction and one running in this direction. Anti-parallel. And why that's important is because when we're replicating DNA. When we're using this template to make new strands of DNA, we can only add in certain directions. We can only add to the three prime end of this molecule. And if you look down here, we have this OH group, this hydroxyl group hanging off the five carbon sugar. That denotes the three prime end. We can add another nucleotide, boom, right there. We can add it to that three prime end. This is a five prime end, the opposite of the three. This is the five prime end up here. We can't add to the five prime end. We don't have that open OH available uh, for polymerization of this molecule. And if you notice, we have the three prime end at the bottom here, the five prime end at the top here. On the other strand or complementary strand, it's opposite. It's anti-parallel. We have our three prime end with its exposed OH facing this direction and we have our five prime end down here without the OH here. So remember we can only add to the three prime end because of that OH group. Basic DNA structure, just kind of a, a, a review. And here's a, a simplified look at the double helix as it's straightened out in its latter form. These are going to be used as templates as we open it up using a, a, an enzyme called helicase. We open it up and each becomes a template for the building of new DNA strands. So we've got our original being conserved and then our other half is going to be made up of new DNA nucleotides. Our original with new DNA nucleotides. All right. So the original is semi-conserved. All right. Half of it is made is made up of the original. The other half is new genetic material that's floating around uh, in the cell's nucleus. Okay, semi-conservative. Here we go. When we are adding these nucleotides, they come in initially as a molecule called a nucleoside triphosphate. They have three phosphates on here. It's going to add, and what two of those phosphates, phosphates are going to leave leaving just one in the nucleotide then. And look, our five prime end is up here, so our three prime end must be down here. Here's our free OH group. We can add to this three prime end. And here's another free OH group for the next nucleoside triphosphate to come in. If we were adding, well, we can't add to the five prime end, okay? 
very important that we remember this, okay? The enzyme that goes through this process, the enzyme that adds these nucleoside triphosphates is DNA polymerase 3. And as DNA polymerase 3 comes in and does its job, it's traveling along and reading from the 3' prime to 5' prime direction of the template. It's traveling in from this top direction and, and, and moving down, 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 and reading from the 3' prime to 5' prime end. Reading from 3' prime, prime to 5' prime. It's adding, though, here's our new strand. It's going to be adding from 5' prime to the 3' prime direction. So reading as it travels along and brings in these nucleoside triphosphates, as it travels along, it's reading 3', pri three prime to 5' prime, but it's adding the new strand, 5' prime to 3' prime, because we can only add to this 3' prime end of the new strand because of the free OH group. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, just a little bit of terminology as far as the direction in which this polymerase can travel. This is going to be important when we start talking about the leading strand and the lagging strand. Okay, So as you can see in this graphic, the dark blue is our original DNA. The light blue is our new strand. And whenever we're doing this, we need some kind of origin of replication. So you have um, another enzyme called helicase that's going to travel along and it's going to find the origin of replication. Typically there are a lot of thymines and adenines in an origin of replication. And it's going to start opening up that, that DNA strand. It's going to create a bubble, a replication bubble. And it opens it up and obviously there's these hydrogen bonds that have been broken and they want to go back together. Um, but they're stabilized. This bubble is stabilized by single-stranded binding proteins. And they're going to bind to this bubble and keep it apart. And as you can see in the graphic, there can be multiple bubbles. There's this bubble that's going to be replicating in this direction and in this direction. There's this bubble that's going to be replicating towards the next bubble and towards the next one. And once they run into each other, we complete uh, our, our replication event. And we end up with two new daughter molecules. And remember, semi-conservative. Part of the original is conserved, and then we have new DNA to be made with it. So let's look at a, a replication bubble. Uh, another piece of terminology, this is a replication fork going in this direction. This is a replication fork going in the other direction. I've mentioned some of these already. These are the enzymes we need to keep in mind. Okay, helicase is going to do the unwinding, which is going to be stabilized by the single-strand binding protein. Topoisomerase is going to repair, correct, overwinding if that, if that tends to happen from the helicase. And then once we start the actual replication process, we're going to be concerned with primase, DNA polymerase 3, DNA polymerase 1, and ligase. And we'll go through these one at a time as we go through this process. So we're zooming in on this particular part of the replication bubble. Here's our origin of replication. Here's our replication fork, which is right here. And we're going to get after this, all right? So what you need to begin with, remember, we need, we can only add to the three prime end if there is an exposed OH. So what has to happen if you look at this little red uh, length of, of genetic material right here. You need a primer to begin, all right? And this primer is actually made of RNA. And RNA primase comes in and lays it down. Primase comes in, lays this primer down, okay? And this left side, right here where I'm pointing, this left side is the three prime end of this primer. This is the three prime end. It has an exposed OH group. Okay, so we can add to that end. So DNA polymerase 3, which is right here on our graphic, they fast forwarded a little bit, is going to come in right here. It's going to come in right there. And it's going to start adding the nucleoside triphosphate. It's going to start adding the nucleotides. 
in the direction of the replication fork continuously. Just keep adding and adding and adding and adding. And each time there's another exposed OH and you add another nucleotide, etc. And we do this continuously toward the replication fork. This is the leading strand. Very simple. Okay, because the three prime end is exposed in the direction of the replication fork. And we can simply keep adding the leading strand. The lagging strand is a little bit more difficult. Remember, these are anti-parallel, all right? So if the three prime end is facing this way for the leading strand, it's going to be facing the opposite way for the lagging strand. So we have to do this a little bit differently. And here's what we have to do for the lagging strand, all right? This is already starting to, to finish up, so I'll, maybe we'll start with this primer. Once again, has to start with primase coming in and laying down an RNA primer. All right, and this right here, this is the three prime end of that primer. So DNA polymerase three can come and it can add. All right, that's what's happening right here. We have our primer. DNA polymerase three is adding to the three prime end of the primer. And it's going to do that until it gets to the previous primer, which has been laid down previously. And then another primer is going to be added. Here's our primase. Here's the three prime end. DNA polymerase three is going to come in. It's going to add a section of DNA, a fragment of DNA called an Okazaki fragment. Here's your spelling. Primase comes in. Here's the three prime end. DNA polymerase 3 adds to the 3 prime end of that primer until it gets to the previous primer. And then DNA polymerase 1 is going to replace the RNA of this primer with DNA. All right, and that's what's happening here. This primer is going away because DNA polymerase 1 is replacing that red RNA with the blue DNA. And that's going to happen until it gets right here. Because remember, this was the three prime end of these primers. This is the three prime end. This is the three prime end. So this must be the five prime end of the primers. Okay, this is the five prime end. And our polymerases can't add to the five prime end. So they stop, they fall off, and ligase is going to form what's called phosphodiester bonds to close this up. All right, now it's kind of complicated. Well, it's pretty complicated once when we're looking at this graphic, but I want to show you um, an animation, and hopefully this will help to explain things a little bit better. So we'll pull this up. All right, here's our helicase. It's looking for the origin of replication. It finds and it starts to unwind our DNA. These are single-strand binding proteins that are going to stabilize this replication bubble. Now, remember, let's go back just a second. Remember, this is going to go in both directions, okay? We would have a helicase going this way, and we would have a helicase going that way. So the, the replication force can go in both directions, but we're going to concentrate on one particular direction here. Here's our three prime end because of our exposed OH group. And we can add to this end. We can't add to the five prime end. We can only add to the three prime end because that's where our exposed OH is. And look, remember the nucleoside triphosphate? Watch what happens to the other two phosphates. There they go. They're gone and now we have a, a true nucleotide. Okay, so here we go. Here's our primase. We need to start with some kind of primer. We can add to the three prime end of this primer, which is right here. This is the three prime end of the primer, so we can add to it. This is the five prime end. We cannot add to it. So in comes DNA polymerase three and starts adding continuously to this three prime end. This is the leading strand. This is the leading strand, and it's going to continue 
uh, without any pause toward the replication fork. Now, the lagging strand is going to be a little bit different. The lagging strand, we're going to once again have to add a primer and move uh, from there. So we'll wait for the primates to come in. But here it comes. Remember, for the, our primer up here, the leading strand was facing the fork. Okay, or the, the three prime end was facing the fork. Here, the three prime end is facing away from the fork because it's anti-parallel. This is the five prime end. We can't add to the five prime end and just go. We have to add to the three prime end and work back. And then we'll add another primer and work back. So we add our primer. DNA pile 3 comes in, works back until it gets to the previous primer. And remember, that was the 5 prime end of that primer. We got to do something else. Okay, DNA pile 1 comes in, replaces that primer with DNA and ligase as the phosphodiester bonds to seal it up. So we're going to add another primer. This is the three prime end of that primer. This is the five prime end. We can add to the three prime end. So here goes pile three. Adds till it gets to the previous primer. Pile one replaces the previous primer with DNA and ligase seals it up. And one more animation for you. Uh, as you can see, I needed a costume change for this one. So let's go through. I think this animation shows you uh, the, the lagging strand quite clearly. We have helicase traveling along and reading and opening up. Um, we have our replication fork here and our bubble forming. Here's our polymerase 3 traveling along the leading strand. Okay, it didn't show primase laying down the primer with the exposed 3 prime end and then pile 3 adding continuously toward the replication fork. But that's what's happening on the leading strand. Here's the lagging strand. Here's our first primer. Okay, in the leading strand, the three prime end, remember, the three prime end of the primer is facing the replication fork. In the lagging strand, the three prime end, because it's anti-parallel, the three prime end of that primer is facing away. And this is the five prime end of the primer. So we need to keep adding primers and working back from that exposed three prime end. Here comes primase traveling in. It's going to make it to the lagging strand. And it's going to put on our next primer so we can move forward with our Okazaki fragments. Okay, and we continue for the primase. As attached, it's going to lay down the RNA primer and watch where the three prime end. Here's our, here's, excuse me, here's our three prime end. DNA polymerase three adds to that three prime end until it gets to the previous primer. And then it's DNA polymerase one's job to replace that primer. It was RNA, now it's DNA. And we've got this little gap here. That needs to be filled by the DNA ligase with those phosphodiester bonds. Primase again, put in the next primer, work back, how three, how one replaces, ligase fills. Okay, and that's it.